Good evening. I'm Stephanie Tsai. John Yang is away. The Trump campaign says it was hacked by foreign sources hostile to the U.S. and pointed toward Iran. Politico was the first to report the hack, saying they began receiving emails in late July from an anonymous account with documents from inside the Trump campaign. They appeared to be from a senior campaign official and were related to Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance. Now, fellow Republicans are blaming the Biden administration which they say has failed to hold Iran accountable. They tried to hack his campaign or did hack his campaign this week. They're trying to kill him. Uh, and we know from the intelligence community, Iran doesn't want Trump back. Why? Uh, because he held them accountable. Microsoft reported on Friday it was aware a presidential campaign had been targeted in an attack by Iranian hackers, but did not specify which campaign. The Israeli military says it is searching for multiple terrorists after a deadly shooting in the occupied West Bank. Defense forces say Palestinian gunmen opened fire from inside a car, hitting two Israelis. One was killed, another was wounded. Settler violence is on the rise in the area as the war between Israel and Hamas stretches into its 10th month. Brazilian officials say the remains of all 62 people inside a plane that went down last week in Sao Paulo State have been recovered from the crash site. Families of those killed in the plane crash gathered in Sao Paulo to identify loved ones. The news was heartbreaking for everyone, for his aunts, for his mother. His mother is torn apart. Losing a child is already difficult in any situation, let alone this one. Now, medical examiners will collect DNA samples in order to match those remains to families. Investigators are analyzing flight recorder data, and preliminary results are expected within 30 days. The search is on for the bodies of those killed in a landfill collapse in Uganda. The Red Cross says at least 18 people were killed, including two children, after the massive site caved from heavy rain. Those same storms are also slowing rescue teams. The landfill is in an impoverished area where women and children often dig through the piles to find scrap materials they can get paid for. American gymnast Jordan Childs is in the center of a storm surrounding one Olympic bronze medal. The International Olympic Committee stripped Childs of the medal today, but the U.S. Olympic Committee says it will appeal the decision. She won bronze last week for her floor routine, but only after her coach questioned the scoring and submitted an inquiry. An inquiry, Olympic officials said, came after the one-minute time limit for challenging scores. Romanian gymnast Anna Barboza was elevated back to third place in the competition. The U.S. picked up its final two gold medals of the Paris Olympics to close out the games at the top of the medal table. First, American cyclist Jennifer Valente cruised to victory in the Women's Omnium, a multi-race track cycling event. Then, in an adrenaline-filled women's basketball final, Team USA beat France by one point. The win was the eighth consecutive title for the women's team and tied the U.S. with China for the most gold medals at 40. And Paris celebrated the closing ceremony with the official handover to Los Angeles for the 2028 Summer Games. Still to come on PBS News Weekend, the push for gender equity at the Olympics. And what is being done to tackle the growing problem of debris left behind in space? This is PBS News Weekend. From WETA Studios in Washington, home of the PBS NewsHour, weeknights on PBS.